From the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, where there's no gaslighting, gas price gouging, or any other misinformation from America, Russia, or anywhere else, let's take a look back at another week that was. And you know, you can get all my columns, news of the day, Bible verses, and more, all beamed to your email inbox, always free. All you got to do is sign up for the newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. Not content with having enabled Vladimir Putin's aggression toward his neighbors, President Joe Biden seems intent on doing the same thing for Iran. Talks are being held in Vienna to revive Obama's dangerous Iran nuclear deal. But one Israeli security official noted, quote, Obama's deal was bad, but Biden's version is spectacularly bad. Obama himself said, never underestimate Biden's ability to bleep things up. I'll leave it at that. And so now we're hearing leaks out of the meetings that it's worse than anyone ever feared. Iran is getting concessions that even they didn't think they'd be able to secure. Reportedly, those include lifting sanctions on some of the most evil mass murdering terrorists in all the Middle East. Sounds as if Biden sent people who play poker the same way he does with Putin by announcing in advance that there's no way he'd ever send troops to Ukraine. Really though, this isn't poker. This is the Biden administration playing checkers or maybe hungry, hungry hippos. Next up, probably the surest way to tell when someone doesn't have a good argument for their point of view is when they're terrified of letting anyone hear the opposing point of view. In a free marketplace of ideas, people who are confident in their views have no fear of having to defend them. Only those who can't defend their views want to shut down debate. Well, this explains why the left, the people who believe in proven disasters like socialism, communism, big government, high taxes, open borders, racial divisiveness, gender confusion, defunding police, releasing criminals, and, el and eliminating oil and gas before having a viable alternative. That's why they're so desperate to silence their opponents by banning them from the media and the internet. Here's the latest example that has them frothing at the mouth. Americano, which is the nation's first Spanish language conservative network, debuted on satellite radio this week, and top Democrats are positively wetting themselves over the thought of Hispanic audiences hearing conservative views without having them spun by leftist reporters. Of course, they claim this is because they're worried Hispanics will be the victims of disinformation, their current euphemism for information that disproves what we believe. Americano founder and CEO Ivan Garcia Hidalgo fired back that the network isn't airing disinformation or misinformation. It's airing views that leftists simply don't want Hispanics to hear. He said they're scared. And they should be. Democrats took Hispanics for granted for too long, and no one thought to create a home somewhere in for us in the conservative media. There's an appetite for this, and you see it on social media. You see it in elections. We certainly saw it last week in Texas primaries, where GOP turnout in largely Hispanic border counties was up by as much as 160%. And that was before Americano launched, so they obviously weren't victimized by conservative disinformation from them. What moved them was what they saw with their own eyes, the results of insane Democrat policies. And as war rages in Ukraine, and some of us are frankly concerned about World War III breaking out, the clown administration in the White House is taking the show on the road. Vice President Kamala Harris, heaven help us, was dispatched to Poland for some reason, where she performed her usual comedy routine. I wanted to know if you think, and if you asked the United States to specifically accept more refugees. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a friend in need is a friend indeed. <laughs> okay, I, I, I can first. Yeah, the refugee crisis is truly hilarious, apparently. As two million people have fled the war zone in Ukraine, that was her response. 
This administration is also now blaming Putin for the spike in gas prices. The pain you're feeling at the pump every time you fill up, even though gas prices have been on the rise literally since Biden was sworn in last January. In fact, here's a chart of the last 18 months, courtesy of GasBuddy.com. Look at it. The reality is this. This is all right in line with the Biden administration's so-called green agenda. The ultimate goal here is to get you to give up your gas guzzling car to get on the bus or into a Tesla, all in the name of climate change or something. Here's Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm. We obviously are all in on making sure that we meet the president's goals of getting to 100% clean electricity by 2035 and uh, net zero carbon emissions by 2050. And, um, you know, if you drive an electric car, this would not be affecting you, clearly. Yeah, let them eat cake. That's what Marie Antoinette said. Sounds kind of like what Jennifer Granholm was saying. Or in this case, let them drive Teslas. Now, if you can't afford those crazy gas prices, how are you supposed to afford a $50,000 Tesla? And by the way, that's the cheap version. Here's that same energy secretary when asked, what about boosting domestic oil production? What is the Granholm plan to increase oil production in America? <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah, that's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. That's a real knee slapper. I mean, does anyone else find this even close to funny? But they're all on the same page. Here's transportation mayor, secretary of whatever, Pete Buttigieg. Last month, we announced a $5 billion investment to build out a nationwide electric vehicle charging network so the people from rural to suburban to urban communities can all benefit from the gas savings of driving an EV. Wonderful. Thank you, Pete. Just great. You just have to buy the expensive little Tesla, and then you get to enjoy the benefits. Interestingly, Tesla CEO Elon Musk had this to say this week. I quote, hate to say it, but we need to increase oil and gas output immediately. Extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures, end quote. That's from Elon Musk. He sells more electric cars than anybody. He recognizes we're not ready to make the total conversion. What's wrong with him at the White House? Boosting domestic oil production would negatively affect his company, and he even admits it. But he says it's the right thing to do for the American people. Just incredible and disgraceful that no one in the Biden administration will even give his words a second thought. It's all just a laugh riot to them. Well, until next time, these have been the facts of the matter. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, then subscribe, and hit the notification bell below. Now, if you didn't like it, you ought to find a Ben Shapiro video to detox you with more facts. <laughs>